There has been some speculation that years of damage to the ozone layer may allow more ultraviolet radiation in now than there used to be. What I think is the biggest change in recent decades is our society's attitude towards sun exposure. You get a quicker tan, a double tan when you use QT. Guaranteed. Don't hide it. Flash them your copper tone tan. Flash them the dark tan. Flash them the fast tan. If you look back a hundred years ago at old photographs of people at the beach, you saw these bathing suits that covered virtually the whole body. Today, a feeling like we should be out in the sun more, or feeling like there's something attractive, even sexy, about a tan. I'm Dr. Vernon Sondak. I'm the chair of the Department of Cutaneous Oncology and a cancer surgeon here at the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. People don't realize what a critically important organ the skin really is. And one of the primary ways the skin protects us is by protecting us from the harmful rays of the sun. The ultraviolet light that penetrates the Earth's atmosphere hits our skin, and the pigment cells that produce melanin spring into action to protect the other sensitive cells in the skin. Melanoma is the kind of skin cancer that develops from those protector cells in our skin, the melanocytes. When they themselves have been damaged and they become malignant, they grow without the normal controls and constraints that cells normally have the melanoma begins to invade and can quickly reach layers of the skin where it can spread first to your lymph nodes and then out into the bloodstream. And if it does that, left unchecked, that melanoma will eventually kill somebody. Even when we get a tan, that's our body adapting to the amount of ultraviolet radiation. And we have DNA damage and sometimes cell death. Even a single severe sunburn early in life can be enough to trigger melanoma. About one in every five Caucasian adults in the United States will get skin cancer at some point in their lifetime. We recommend broad spectrum sunscreen, one that covers both UVA and UVB. The SPF number reflects the relative protection that that sunscreen provides. SPF of 10 means it would take 10 times longer to get burned with that amount of sunscreen on than it would without it. One of the things about skin cancer that we can't emphasize enough. It's right there on your skin. We have the opportunity for early diagnosis. None of them look the same. So we look at the asymmetry of the lesion, we look at its size, we look at its cellularity, we look at the cells and see do they look malignant or do they look benign. So for example, when you hear about the ABCDEs, we can see these under the microscope. A normal mole shouldn't have any of these A, B, C, D signs. Most normal moles should have a smooth edge, but an abnormal mole or a melanoma will have a more irregular edge. Many melanomas have variable colors, so a dark color developing in a previous light tan mole, very concerning sign. 
Whenever we see a mole that's irregularly shaped, we know that this is at least an abnormal mole and might be melanoma. 2015, I was at our local pool and my daughter noticed a mole on my back that had gotten changed in shape and color. Finally took the, all of their advice and urging and went to see a dermatologist who looked at it right away and said, why, why did you wait until now to, you know, this thing is ugly. So once that first melanocyte goes bad and begins melanoma, now we're on a downward path where the melanomas continue to grow. Sooner or later, those melanoma cells will implant somewhere, whether it's in your lungs, your liver, your brain. It was everywhere. It was in 15 different places in my body, including my left lung. I remember the oncologist, you know, looking at the diagnosis of the PET scan and saying, I, I, I don't know what to tell you other than you're stage four. I had read a lot of articles about Keytruda online. In the last eight years, dozens of new drugs have been developed for melanoma that exploit both the immune system and targeted treatments that identify weaknesses in the genes of the melanoma and attack the mutations that the melanoma uses to grow and divide and thrive. So think of the immune system as being turned off in uh, most cancers. And what a drug like Keytruda does, it releases the breaks on the T cell to allow the T cell to attack the cancer. The T cells are the natural surveillance and attack mechanism that our body has for attacking invaders. I felt almost immediately after my first two or three infusions, a reduction in the size of the tumors that I could feel in my body. The Keytruda was obviously doing its job. In a year, my cancer was, was gone. We're seeing responses in patients that we never really thought would be possible just by stimulating the immune system. The survival rate for metastatic melanoma was pretty much abysmal. The survival rate at five years was approximately 5%. Now, with the advent of immune therapy, we can get these numbers upwards of about 30, 40%. We now use these immune therapy drugs in virtually every form of skin cancer, but also in lung cancer, in some forms of colon cancer, all across the whole spectrum of diseases. One of the scary things about cancer is how it almost seems to anticipate what we're going to do to attack it and come up with a defense. We have to protect ourselves with sunscreens, with clothing, with behaviors that make us safe for the sun. I often tell my patients who had an early cancer detected, the sun was trying to kill you. It didn't succeed this time. Don't give it a second chance.